gas valve troubleshooting, gas heat troubleshooting. Today I've got a gas package unit I'm working on. I'm going to take you through troubleshooting and replacing a gas valve if we have to in today's video. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad. Let's get started. All right, let's place the fuse in the control board and then let's go ahead and get it running. Deucer motor comes on first, pulls a vacuum, pressure switch closes, and then all the other safeties like the rollout switch and limit switches in the blower cabinet, all those close and then the, uh, the board should click. Once it clicks, it should send power to the hot surface igniter. Meter on volts AC. We're gonna put our leads inside the plug for the hot surface igniter. And I heard a click. Hot surface igniter's glowing. Two hundred and fifty volts to the hot surface igniter. See that? It's glowing. Then our gas valve should open. Oh, I heard the gas valve click and I, I felt it open. Now let's check the voltage to the gas valve. Since that's the last step, right? Look, 15 volts to the valve without the call. Usually gas valve has a little bit of voltage going to the coil of the valve before the call but everything's working so far i think we have a bad gas valve but we need to check the inlet pressure make sure we have enough coming in and then make sure that when it has 24 volts that it's opening so meter on volts ac we've got our two wires that go to the gas valve we've got those hooked up to the meter leads so here we go hot surface igniter is glowing what do we got going to our valve? Come on. Hot surface igniter's glowing. Click, 28 volts, look at that. All right, oh, it's still, it's still sending voltage. I don't think it sent voltage that long when the wires were connected to the valve. And this is something you're gonna run into um, you could have a shorted coil and that could be the problem, keeping the valve from opening. Let's go ahead and take out the inlet screw and let's check the pressure. So right here, turn off the shut off. I'm going to go ahead and take out the disconnect because I don't really want it running while I'm trying to check gas pressure. Now let's bring out the dual port manometer and our little service valve wrench and let's take out this screw now we shouldn't have gas going to it because we just turned the shut off off you don't want to take this screw out the inlet screw for the gas valve whenever you have gas going to it now i got this little barb fitting right here i'm going to screw this barb fitting in come on buddy Get in there. All right, there we go. Now hook up the tube. Now put the tube on one of the ports for the manometer. And I'm gonna set it right here. And then we need to clear it. So we're gonna zero. All right, we zeroed it out. It's gonna read the pressure. Now let's go ahead and turn the gas supply back on and see what we get. What we got, we should have you know, at least, you know, usually you want to have about seven, but we got 6.3 and that's okay because we need to at least have, you know, four or five to get three and a half on the other side. Now, we know we got enough pressure coming to our gas valve. We know we got enough voltage, but do we have enough gas pressure on the outlet side when the gas valve opens? Let me check it. All right trying to take out the outlet screw but guess what somebody before me rounded out the screw so now i can't even take it out if you did this let me know man so i can't take it out so now 
I don't even know if there's gas on the outlet side, but I'll tell you what I can do. I can either one, take a lighter, try to light right here where the orifices are, or I could take and cover these up and then place my tube, you know, right here on one of the orifices like that. You know, I really don't want to do that. Uh, it just, or I could take this pipe off, but I don't want to do that either. I do not want to do that either. So what I'm going to do, I guess, is get a lighter. You know, also you want to check your orifices. Make sure your orifices aren't stopped up. How do you know if they're stopped up? You take these four screws out, then you take and bend this pipe up, and then you take all these orifices out. Once you take them out, you look inside and see if there's cobwebs in the orifice holes because if this is running in cooling, then you're not using the gas during the summer and then spiders will go inside the orifice hole and they will clog those orifice holes with spider webs. So that's something I commonly run into. I think I got a bad gas valve. What we're gonna do is we're gonna measure the coils real quick to compare. So put your meter on ohms where the upside down U is. All right, let's place my meter right here. All right, it's on ohms. Is it working correctly? Meter leads together, should read some resistance and then open loop whenever we're not touching. Now let's measure this good gas valves coil. What's it say? 6.95. All right, now let's measure this gas valve between these two leads and it's reading five. So a little bit of a lower ohm reading. Let me go get my lighter. Let's plug these wires back up and let's let it restart. And let's see if we got any gas going to these orifices. I've actually never had to do this before. Used a 5 16th self tap screw and I drilled a hole straight through that outlet screw. Take a look. So now, we're ready. See that? Hole straight through it. All right, I'm gonna plug these wires back up and we are going to turn the gas back on and plug it back in so we can measure that outlet pressure. And I'm just gonna put my finger right here because you'll be able to feel the gas coming out. And then when I feel it, I'm gonna put my tube right there. Patink! Which I'll go ahead and just, actually I'll just put my tube right there. Zeroing out my manometer. Set it up right there. Where we can see it, just heard the click, take a look. Hot surface igniter is gonna start glowing. And there it goes, it's glowing. All right, come up here, manometer. I've got the tube on there, so we should be reading some gas pressure. Nothing, just goes right back off. It's like whenever it calls, it's like there's a short in the coil and it just takes and takes that call away immediately. So we're gonna go ahead and replace the gas valve because I got no outlet pressure, it won't stay on. Then we're gonna recheck it. This is the gas valve that I'm installing. It's a single stage valve and this is the number. All right, so before you put the new valve in, you wanna get some pipe thread sealant, and that's a little too much, but that's okay. We wanna make sure it doesn't leak. Also on gas valves, you've got an arrow. See the arrow? So we need the gas line to come into the valve, and then we need the manifold pipe to be on the other side. So we're gonna take and put the new valve in, and then we're gonna do some tests. 
Make sure you have two pipe wrenches if you're doing this. New gas valve is in. Before we tighten up the union, I want to turn on the shutoff and then we want to tighten it up because we want to bleed a little bit of that air out of the line. Now, before I leave, anytime you install a gas line, you have to remove some and put it back in. You want to soap test this. Make sure you don't have any leaks. Now, <clears throat> tight. All right, now we can check the gas pressure on the outlet side of this gas valve. Now, let me show you where the outlet screw is. So the inlet screw is right there. And the outlet screw is right there. Ooh, got some pipe thread sealing on it. All right, so I'm gonna take out this screw here. And see, this isn't rounded. So it'll come out pretty easily. All right, screw is out of the way. Let's hook up the manometer. Barb fitting right here. Barb fitting, come on. There we go. Make sure it's tight. Install the tube. Install the wires back on the top of the valve. We had a yellow and gray and a brown comes from the control board. Turn on the gas valve. Turn on the manometer. Zero it out. All right, let me put the disconnect back in. Disconnect back in, let's go. If you don't know anything about troubleshooting, I'm gonna put a video right here. Go check out that video and learn more about gas heat troubleshooting. Now, one thing we're going to want to do is we're gonna to wanna to take the cap off for the adjustment screw. So it's underneath this right here, this gold plated looking screw. So we get a flathead screwdriver, loosen that up. All right, look at that. Hot surface igniter is glowing. Check out manometer reading as the gas valve gets energized. Look at that, 3.49. If we wanna increase the gas pressure, we take our flathead screwdriver, we put it down in this hole and we go to the right which is clockwise, increases pressure. Look at it now. It is 3.78. We'll take it up to four. Now look at my hand. Let's go back to the left, counterclockwise. What happens? And what do we need on the manifold pressure for natural gas? About three and a half, right? Because this is single stage gas. So I'm gonna bring it to Three and a half, about right there, 3.4, 3.5. All right, our gas pressure is set. If you're working with propane, your manifold pressure, which is your outlet pressure, should be 10. If you're working, for nat working with natural gas, it should be three and a half. If we have a two-stage gas valve, that means we have a low fire and a high fire. Our low fire should be on 1.7 for natural gas, our high fire should be on 3.5. If it's propane, propane, low fire should be around 6.7 to seven, and then high fire should be 10. We just fixed this unit. We had a bad gas valve. 
I think the ohm reading was a sign, telltale sign, but the major test that we did was we had no outlet gas. We had no outlet pressure. So if you got voltage to the valve and you've got no gas coming out of the valve and you got gas going to the valve, there you go, bad gas valve. All right, so make sure you put the outlet screw back in place. I'll tell you a story about a young technician, his name was Tad, and that's me. And the first year that I was doing HVAC, I left the outlet screw like a half a turn loose, right? Or a whole turn. And it was an American Standard package gas unit, and I just wasn't thinking, being thorough, didn't know what I was doing, just a new technician. Well, what do you think happened whenever that gas valve got energized, or that coil received 24 volts? It opened, and around the outlet screw, where it wasn't tight, the gas leaked out. It blew the panels off the unit, caught the unit on fire, cost the company $2,000, and uh, it scared an old lady. She was living out on the lake, I'll never forget it. The ductwork filled with smoke, it blew the smoke in the house, and uh, she thought her house was going to burn down. And yeah, I got chewed out, but hey, I learned my lesson. But I don't want you to make that mistake, so that's why I bring that up in today's video. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you want more videos like this, go check out my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technicians. Uh, if you're a technician, but you want to be a better technician, I've got hundreds of videos live experience in the field as a technician to help you be a better technician. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe and smash that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. You've been watching Taddy Digest. This is HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad and I'll keep you cool if you let me.